My name is Mats Andersson and I'm the executive director of the Swedish American Chamber here in San Francisco, Silicon Valley. And make sure you stay until the end because we got a special offer for the course coming at the end. Uh, Dee, Malin, over to you. Tell us how, how this all started. Thank you, Mats. Uh, it's great to be with you this morning. Um, so as Mats said, I'm Malin turnquist Clark. Um, in my day job, um, I am the head of consulting and partner at Third Economy. Um, spending my days um, focused on ESG, so environmental, um, social and governance strategies. So governance is very close to my heart. Um, and this past year, I was searching for a bridge um, between the US and Sweden from a professional perspective. And at the same time, I'd been talking to uh, Katrin and Margareta at the chamber, and they were very uh, involved and had some several projects going on um, where they were making connections between Swedish companies and um, resources here in the Bay Area. So they were looking for ways to build on these connections um, and also um, you know, bring more value to their uh, board, to their uh, members, and also add new members. So we uh, came up with the idea of a board referral service. Um, um, we were thinking a database of individuals interested in serving as board members for Swedish companies uh, expanded into the US. Um, we did some research and we found that um, companies uh, with expansions plan were in fact inter interested in the service. And we also found quite a lot of interest uh, amongst individuals and members of the chamber uh, here in the Bay Area where uh, similar to me, they saw an opportunity to leverage their experience um, and their network locally um, to support Swedish companies um, and create that professional bridge back to Sweden and also as an opportunity to give back to, um, to Swedish companies. Um, and of course for uh, SAC, this would be a value add to their members and also hopefully grow the membership. So um, as mentioned earlier, uh, good governance is close to my heart and it's critical. Um, so we wanted to offer a way for potential board members to um, get educated and specifically get educated on governance uh, in companies that are incorporated in Sweden. So that's how we, through um, the Stockholm Chamber of Commerce, uh, got introduced to Styrelsekemin in Stockholm. Um, and it's kind of how this collaboration started. So with that, I'll hand it over to Camilla. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be part of this collaboration. Uh, my name is Camilla Åken and I'm the Head of Education at uh, Studiesakademi in Stockholm, the Swedish Board of Directors. Uh, we are a non-profit uh, non membership organization and have more than 7,500 members. We help people to make difference in boardrooms and we're offering training, network opportunities and recruitment. Today we are the largest network for board members and owners in Sweden. We offer a, a wide range of different training courses and our most well-known training course is Effective Company Directorship. The Swedish Academy of Board Directors educates about 2,000 people every year in board work and uh, corporate governance, of which have choose to participate in our certification course, Effective Company Directorship. This certification certificate course is uh, to expand the participants' knowledge of corporate governance and board work and to become more active and professional in board work. The certificate is also awarded to participants who have completed the training and passed our examination when the nomination committees and owners are looking for new board members. So if you want to know more about us, our courses, or what uh, membership means, you're Welcome to contact me for more information. Thank you. Thanks, Camilla. That's great information. And uh, now over to Torsten Ottengren, who is going to go through you what's going to come in uh, this, this course. He's the trainer. And we also have uh, Krista Bergman from uh, SAC uh, USA, the board member of SAC USA, who is in the panelist. And he's been uh, doing a similar uh, director training or beforehand. So over to you, Torsten. The scene is yours. Thank you very much, and, and uh, it's great to, to be here on this webinar with you guys, uh, all of you. 
Uh, my name is Torsten Ottengren, and uh, as uh, Camilla and, and Matt said, I'm teaching this course, and I've been doing so for uh, 10 years uh, at least. Uh, and uh, I actually took this training myself about 15 years ago. And I can tell you that a lot has happened in Swedish corporate governance since that. Uh, I have a um, presentation that I'm going to share with you, and, and you are most welcome to, to ask questions along the way. So, um, the name of this course is Effective Company Directorship. And um, it has uh, developed a lot of corporate governance in Sweden, as I said just before. Um, 15 years ago, uh, board members were recruited uh, probably in, on, in the, the sauna uh, or on the golf course uh, or among friends. And it was uh, more of sort of an honorable uh, assignment. And boards were not, were not very active, actually. Um, they were sitting in the board, uh, not working. Uh, today, um, we see a lot more professionalism in the boards, and especially in the larger companies. But it's uh, sort of growing very rapidly in also small and medium-sized companies. Um, it used to be um, boards' uh, greatest task only to appoint a CEO. And, uh, well, if the CEO didn't do the job, uh, they found somebody else. Uh, but board does have a lot of responsibilities and uh, that's what we're teaching in this course. Swedish corporate governance, um, that's what it's all about. Um, of course we have uh, similarities working in boards in, in US and, and in other parts of the world, but Swedish corporate governance is uh, in many ways different. Um, it's similar to uh, the other Nordic countries, uh, but it's very different from uh, continental European or, or uh, US style, definitely. Um, this course uh, is focused on private uh, limited liability companies, uh, small to large. Of course, I will uh, elaborate a bit on, on listed companies as well. That's my expert field, actually. Um, but uh, focuses on, on small and large private limited liability companies. When you talk about corporate governance, um, you can define it as uh, owner's governance or the board's governance and the management's governance. But in this training, we'll focus on the board's governance, uh, but we'll also be uh, looking into the owner's governance a bit. Uh, we'll talk about the board's role and staffing and the different processes and definitely liability and the best practice. Um, we have uh, a law in Sweden, the Swedish Companies Act, Aktiebolagslagen, and uh, there is, uh, of course, a lot written about governance there. And we'll go in, in deeply into chapter eight uh, about governance. Um, however, uh, most of the board work today, that's the built on best practice. And that's really what we're trying to teach here. This slide is, is actually one of my favorites. Um, it describes corporate governance. Wow, it, you can see it, it's cockpit here. Uh, what is it talking about? Well. You know who's sitting here in the cockpit? That's uh, the captain and the co-pilot, of course. And they have uh, a mission to take this uh, vehicle from uh, point A to point B. Um, they have a uh, staff possibly helping them. Uh, and uh, what about the board? What about uh, their role here? Uh, are they sitting in this aircraft, uh, drinking champagne in the back, or are they in the cockpit, uh, trying to help the management, or the, 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 the pilot, uh, and of course, you say it's the management I'm talking about, the CEO and the CFO, it's the same thing. Um, that's what uh, quite a few board members do wrong. They should be in the cockpit, they shouldn't be on the airplane or helicopter, as it is this way, ever. So, where they're supposed to be then? Well, control tower, in the control tower. They're supposed to um, help them with uh, business intelligence, uh, maybe pass on the information that we have a um, uh, volcano outburst on Iceland. You cannot fly over that uh, island. Uh, you cannot go down to Hamburg because we have a terrorist attack there. They should think about maybe the next flight or the flight after that, taking this vehicle from point uh, D to E possibly. Or why not? Um, thinking about replacing uh, the crew. Maybe we need a new co-pilot here, a new CFO. So this is actually what corporate governance is all about, uh, control. Uh, and in, in Swedish corporate governance, well, we have a special legislation and a special uh, tradition, a special culture. 
So um, this uh, course is uh, divided into four different modules. And uh, the first one, uh, it's called effective governance. And here uh, we'll go through the Swedish corporate governance model. Uh, and uh, it's very, it's a strictly hierarchical model with uh, owners. They should own and take only owner decisions. Uh, and of course, it's not possible to uh, do all the controlling and take uh, uh, major decisions during uh, the business year. So they appoint a board for that. And the board and the board members, they are responsible. Uh, they have a personal liability. They are supposed to control the CEO uh, and uh, um, the management and see that they are managing uh, the company in the right way. The fourth body here uh, in the Swedish corporate governance model, that's the auditors. And they have uh, a special role. Uh, they are appointed uh, by the owners to control the board and the CEO that they're doing their job. And of course, they have to look into the books as well. But this is a little different from the US style where the board of directors can appoint and also dismiss the auditors. So uh, in this module, um, we talk about the Companies Act and best market practice, uh, the Swedish corporate governance code, uh, and um, in the Swedish Corporate Governance Code, we have a uh, few uh, um, recommendations regarding committee works. Uh, nomination committee, uh, remuneration committee. Uh, also in, in legislation, we have uh, rules about audit committees. And uh, why do we have committees in, in boards? Well, it's to make board work more efficient. In this part, we'll also cover um, several governing documents. We'll uh, go through a shareholders agreement, the owner's directive, uh, the uh, rules of procedure uh, for the board of directors, articles of association, CEO instruction, and, and reporting instruction. Um, and uh, let me ask Krista here, who is part. Uh, Krista. Uh, could you please uh, turn on your, your uh, webcam and, and maybe make a short introduction and then I will pass on a question to connect it to this uh, first module. Thank you, Torsten. So I'm Christa Bergman. Uh, been living in the US for more than 20, 23 years, been in the IT business for 30 plus years. And in fact, I, you mentioned, Torsten, that you went on the, uh, the class or the course like 15 years ago, probably the same time as I did the same, about the same time. I've been on different boards, uh, public listed companies in Sweden, US, um, not listed companies. And I really enjoyed uh, and, and used what I learned from Australia's Academy way, way back. Good. So uh, talking about uh, corporate governance and Swedish corporate governance, uh, have you been working in, in any committees uh, in your companies where you have been working? Uh, are you used to working in, in the committee form? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, uh, so lately I've been also been in Swedish American Chamber of Commerce um, last 15 years for Washington DC, but also USA and uh, SAC USA, an umbrella organization. And in fact, I used uh, part of the what I learned from the Studios Academy way back. For instance, we do have at SAC USA a remuneration committee. I think it's a good practice to, to bounce ideas about you know, compensation. Uh, I also have, a, if you're small, if you're only like three, four people on the board, there's a lot of times you only have the board is equal to remuneration or nomination. So yes, I think it's a very good way of, of having different committees to help the, 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 the uh, governments. Mm -hmm. Before we move on to the next part, let me just point out that, that uh, the nomination committee, that's very different in Sweden too, well, if you compare it to the rest of the world, because they are appointed by the owners at the annual general meeting. That's not a committee of the board of directors. Right. Um, yeah. So um, otherwise, uh, remember that, that um, committees, uh, well, they're supposed to, to, to make board work more efficient, uh, more effective. Uh, and and um, the board of directors can um, delegate uh, the possibility to take the decisions uh, uh, different tasks uh, to a committee, but they could never delegate away the responsibility. They still always will have the, the, the controlling responsibility uh, for the company. Okay. Yes, of course, I just want to add, you mentioned that, uh, and I like your analogy on the uh, helicopter cockpit and control tower. I, I really mm -hmm. like that. But you also mentioned that uh, there's a lot of documents uh, that is uh, 
I would say, like a, like a law, but also a, a good best practice. And I think that's what I learned that even a small company, and we don't have those, uh, you know, the documents, then as a board director, you have to try to help them and push for creating those documents. I'm not creating a, 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 you know, tons of documents for nothing, but I mean, key documents is there to help all of us, owner, the board, the, 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 the executive team to be more effective. So I really like to, to, to any of you going out to a board director for a smaller company, don't just buy that we don't have those documents because some of those are really essential. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And I, I normally describe this as hygiene factors, actually, uh, okay. that we should have it in place. And, and small companies, of course, not that sort of heavy documents. But uh, So uh, that was the first uh, part uh, regarding uh, corporate governance. Uh, the next part, um, eff effective staffing, um, deals with uh, how to staff a board. Uh, and and uh, of course, uh, um, part of that will cover uh, the uh, the chairperson, as we say in Sweden. Um, when you work in a board, uh, well, uh, how much time will it take? Uh, how many hours, days, weeks, months? Well, of course, it depends on. Uh, but uh, for a small or medium-sized uh, Swedish company, um, mm, normally uh, they say, well, we have uh, four to five board meetings, uh, like uh, after every quarter, then one extra for uh, uh, maybe a strategy day or, or two, or maybe a day to prepare the, the annual general meeting. Um, so that's not that much time, actually. Um, and the, the next part we'll cover here is, uh, what about uh, remuneration? Do you get any pay? Um, another part here is about employee representation. Uh, and we have a very special legislation in Sweden. The third module, effective directorship. Um, here, we're going to talk about what is the board supposed to do? Uh, not only recruit or dismiss uh, a CEO, uh, in the board, we are responsible for everything, actually. And that's very sort of clearly stated in the Swedish Companies Act. So we are responsible for making decisions regarding uh, uh, strategy, uh, long-term goals uh, for the control, uh, not only the financial control, but all the risk control, actually, uh, for sustainability. Uh, the CEO control, of course, uh, information, well, everything. And, and um, traditionally, um, it has been a lot of control, but that has changed over the years to have been much more focused on the future. Um, and and um, I can ask maybe then uh, Chris or, or Signal, do you agree there? Uh, what are your experience from this now? I, I, I fully agree. And I, that's one thing you mentioned in the last uh, segment about how many meetings and what time. I would say that you also have to when you get into a new company to learn the company, you know, spend time there if it's allowed to, to spend time in understanding because you're supposed to help them long term. And it's also important to invest in your own time and your understanding of, 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 of the company, so to speak. And I think that, yes, you should be overall, uh, uh, you are responsible for everything. I think that most boards that I've been on to, you kind of uh, split up the the, the responsibilities, so to speak, in your speci specific field of interest, so that one board member maybe is better in one area and the other, and so we could have a fruitful conversation, because I don't think that all the board members could be expert in everything. That, that's not how it works, but I think it's a teamwork in the board of directors also, and all should know their part of the company and the market, as you said, the control tower. I should know what's going on in the market, so I could help the the CEO and the, and the company to 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 with with uh, you know, guidance, or or, or the, my network ask what's going on in the market so I could add value to the company. That's how I always been trying to do. Good. Um, okay. Uh, well, getting to Torsten, yeah. uh, we, we jump in there. We got a question from Lars, uh, yep. one of our uh, board members. Uh, he, he's sitting in the smoke up in Oregon, so he's uh, switching off uh, the, the camera here. So. Uh, so uh, he, I don't know if you want to read it yourself or should I read the, the question? So uh, apart from the smoke, but one concern I would have serving on a Swedish board is being less aware of Swedish governance rules and implications of fiduciary duties, mm -hmm. responsibilities. 
is a deep dive on these issues part of the course and generally speaking how different are the responsibilities of a Swedish director relative, relative to a Delaware director. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good question. It's, it's a very good introduction to uh, actually the fourth module because that starts with uh, a very big part uh, about liability uh, in the Swedish uh, Axiobolog. And, and um, it is, um, you, you take all the decisions uh, in, in, uh, together, uh, but uh, liability is individual, uh, actually. And, and we have a little different tradition, and actually it's stipulated in, in the Companies Act, that every year at the annual meeting, um, the question is asked if you could uh, give them, a, a, well, approve uh, that, that they're not liable for the last, discharge them from liability. Um, but um, in practice, it means that uh, the owners uh, say that, well, we think you did an okay job. Uh, if they have done something that was uh, criminal, uh, or, or uh, if there is a bankruptcy, or, or if it's a serious uh, um, fault, something is missing in, in the uh, annual report, then it doesn't matter uh, if they have discharged them from liability. Uh, but sure, it will dig into that uh, uh, very uh, uh, thoroughly, uh, actually. And, and um, uh, so, so the big difference here between uh, Delaware Company, uh, well, I know U.S. lawyers when they come to Sweden, and, and uh, when this is on the agenda for the big list of companies, they say, well, we always won't know. <laughs> we should be able to sue them. <laughs> and I guess that's more, more U.S. style, uh, actually. Uh, it's... Um, it happens, but it, it's uh, not very common that, that uh, uh, actually people are brought in, into to court or, or sued uh, for, for uh, not doing their job as board members. And, and uh, I will uh, elaborate that on, that, uh, on, on uh, this course, actually. Uh, talking about liability, in this part, uh, we'll also, of course, cover insurances. Uh, and and uh, there are different types of insurances. Uh, one that the company could or I think should uh, uh, have and one that could be your, your own personal insurance. Um, but uh, most of the part in this uh, Model 4 effective methods will talk about uh, uh, practical board work actually, uh, such as setting the agenda, uh, um, well, uh, taking the different decisions, uh, voting, um, minutes, uh, well, best practice in the boardroom, uh, actually. Uh, and uh, last but not least, we'll uh, talk about board and CEO valuation. Uh, how could that be done? When should it be done, uh, etc. So uh, um, with these four modules, I think it's, it's more like a, a sort of smorgasbord uh, with a, a little of everything, but uh, definitely the, the basics and the things that you should know uh, as a board member, uh, in able to, to sort of feel comfort that uh, I do my job, and, and uh, if I know the legislation, etc., then uh, well, it's very unlikely to uh, well be liable. Christe, um, do you have any experience from from uh, insurances or, or board evaluation or anything else from from board work that you would like to comment upon? Uh, sure, Torsten. I think that you capture. I really like the uh, the way that you have structured the the outline of the of the course, and uh, I think it's very very important. I think a lot of the uh, uh, board members maybe don't understand their their personal liability as well. And yes, I do have experience of different things. I I think one thing that is underrated is minutes, accurate minutes, because if you're sitting in board meeting and then you are silent or you talk about something and it's not reflected in minutes and that it could be linked back to some kind of liability that you should have taken some actions. So I think that all board directors should pay attention to the minutes, what it says, and if it reflect the conversation we had and, and try to get out the minute as soon as possible after the board meeting. To read a, you know, three months old, you mentioned like four, me four meetings a year, quarterly meetings, and I'd say normally four plus two, one is a, a, a strategy meeting and that the second one is the approval of the budget for next year that's normal that i have four plus two but minutes has to come out pretty quick after the mm -hmm. the board meeting don't wait 
to, dis to, to distribute those until three months, because then at least my memory is gone by then. Um, insurance, yes. I, I uh, recommend to everyone to have uh, direct and officer's insurance. Uh, I think it's just a, the way, you know, the compensation, you didn't mention remuneration, but it, it's not in Swedish company, a particular smaller company, it, it's not a gold mine for, for, for board of directors. Uh, and I think you have a lot of liability, and I think that there should be a DNO insurance uh, for that those companies. And yes, board and CEO, CEO evaluation, we've been doing that also, and, and I think it's very, very important. And, and piggyback on what Singh said before, I also think that's important that the board have a social element to get to know each other. Not only coming in, you know, two minutes before the meeting starts and leave like, two hours later and that's it. You, know, you have to try to find a way to, to as Singh said, to know each other because we are one team and then we, we have to work together. Yeah. Because that, that's a big difference between uh, Swedish and US companies that, that, uh, that the board members are non-executive directors. They are not in the, in, in the company, working in the company. They are, they are more external, uh, have quite a different role. And, and um, yeah, and let me com comment on, on that, that with uh, minutes, uh, actually, um, in one of the companies, I'm the chair, uh, we have the practice that, that uh, we send out the secretary the last uh, 10 or 15 minutes uh, and only uh, have a sort of talk with the board members because otherwise we have, of course, the CEO and the CFO yeah. and the secretary and a lot of other people in the boardroom. Uh, the last part, it's just the board. And during that time, the secretary will sort of finish uh, the minutes. And, and uh, before, we close the meeting, we have signed the minutes. And sometimes we have a decision uh, uh, or, uh, or, or a special task for the CEO. And, and it's uh, very important that it's sort of sent the message immediately, I think. I think it's very, I applaud you for, for, for making that was one of my dreams uh, mm -hmm. before, but I mean, it, it's not very common, I think, still that that fast, but I think that's exactly what should be done, it yeah. should be done. And I also agree with, with the, I think it's important to have a board, board directors meeting with just the board also to talk freely among uh, uh, themselves without the, the CEO or the company, the execs there. So mm. I, and if I you told do you this, on the minutes. Well, on a regular basis, it, it's uh, no big deal. And, and yeah. actually during this last five or 10 or 15 minutes, we also evaluate the CEO at every meeting. Uh, we don't sort of save that for, uh, to the end of the year. We got a question from, from Asman. So uh, in, in general, the, the, of the, the course participant, how many go out and become board members of the people who are, uh, have been doing this course uh, hmm. previously in Sweden? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, uh, I would say that some people that, that uh, uh, take this course, they are already board members and, and they would like to uh, sort of, uh, well, know that they're doing the right thing or, or uh, sort of get, get an update because things do change uh, or maybe get new inspiration. And, and uh, others are, are more, uh, I would like to, to become a board member. And, and of course, we have a part uh, where we talk about how to become a board member, uh, how to, to sort of get exposed uh, to, and I say normally that that's uh, just like getting a, a, a normal job. Um, and you have to, to uh, uh, have a good CV and, and uh, get exposed to the people that uh, can recruit you. And that's uh, owners, uh, nomination committees, uh, uh, headhunters, uh, or, uh, well, a lot of people uh, actually out there. It could be uh, um, other board members or, or CEOs that are uh, asking for, for a particular uh, um, uh, input to, to the company, uh, some experience or, or knowledge. So it's, it's uh, pretty much like uh, looking for a normal job. Uh, and, and I don't have the number of, uh, I'm sorry, on how many that to do get a job uh, as a board member. But uh, maybe, a, maybe a side question to that. So, so, so people who are founding their own companies, are, are, uh, uh, are they going often on board on other companies after having done this? Or they, they found one company, they run it and then the no, the network, and, uh, well, uh, through Studios Academy, and there are matchmaking events and, and things like that. Yeah. Also. And, and, and uh, if you become a member, you will be, be you can uh, uh, well, get uh, emails when there are, are opportunities uh, to, to uh, apply for, for, for a new board jobs, actually. 
Yeah. Uh, we got a question from Agneta. Should the CEO and founder be part of the board? Seems more common here in the US. Yeah, and, and, and uh, according to good market practice, uh, best practice in Sweden, uh, the CEO should not be uh, a board member. Uh, according to the Companies Act, uh, he or she uh, had the right to attend uh, all board meetings uh, uh, and, and uh, all the time, unless the board well, speaks about the CEO or the CEO's uh, rumination. And, and uh, in small uh, companies, sometimes uh, it's, it's the founder, it could be also the CEO, and, and then you have to sort of work uh, with that situation. I have one last slide, um, and that's um, about the training and the examination. Um, if you participate in this training, uh, you can uh, get a certificate if you pass the exam. And that is an um, exam that you do over the internet. And it's uh, multiple choice questions. And, and uh, as in real life, you can take uh, the time that you need. Uh, you can look into uh, books or, or, or Google or whatever uh, to find the right answers. This is actually the last part of the training. You have to so show that you have understood uh, well the message and, and, and uh, how to well, act or behave and, and the, the basic legislation. Uh, and you need to have 75% uh, to be able to pass. Uh, and and uh, well, if you don't, well, you get the next chance uh, with uh, new questions or a new order, etc. Uh, and then uh, hopefully, uh, and most people actually are successful on the first attempt. Uh, I think it's about 75% that, that passes. And then you will get the certificate. And that's, of course, uh, very valuable if you apply for a board work. Thank you, Torsten, so much. So, so the course will run the 15th, 16th, 27th, and 28th of October. So it's an online course, and it's given from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific time. That means 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. European or Swedish time, if you're there. Thank you so much, uh, Torsten, for your, uh, for your presentation. Uh, looking forward to collaborate here with you. And uh, thanks for the panelists. So uh, Marlin for having the ID, the great Camilla for do, being sorting all the details. Krista for being a valuable help here. Uh, in, uh, I wish you everyone a great day, great night, depending on where you are. And uh, looking forward to see other um, See you on other, other webinars soon in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah.